Hello, and welcome back again. Um, so here, actually, we have... Oh, this is the 25th anniversary. Very cool. So this is a 1983... Well, I was going to say a 70. Yeah, why was it say 1980? Um, Corvette. Now, this is the L82 package. So, um, under the hood won't be that really nice L88 that these can come with. But, uh, you know, very, very nice cars. Overall, uh, you can't really see that very well on the interior, so unfortunately, uh, nice T-top car and everything. And this is an anniversary car, so uh, yeah, very very nice. Um, you know, and the uh, Corvettes, you know, it's America's sports car. These are all fiberglass cars, and uh, yeah, very very nice. Uh, the the paint is all still good, and the original wheels and everything look great. And, uh, yeah. Alright, then here we have another uh, Chevy pickup truck. This one's a nice little, uh, I love the uh, pinstriping and the patina and stuff like that. This is a 62. Um, Chevrolet. It's a 62 Chevrolet. I don't know if it's C10, C20. What is this? Uh, oh, it's an Apache. Okay, it's an Apache 10. So there you go. Very nice. You know, it's uh, honestly a nice truck overall. Like, it's not really rotted by the looks of it. it. You know, for a ratty build, I just dented and stuff like that, which is, hey, that's okay. It's, it's nice. You know, I love trucks like this because when you have, you know, paint like this, it tells a story, right? Um, compared to uh, most things. And a vehicle like this, you're typically not afraid that, okay, if it gets a, you know, another ding or whatever, not the end of the world. It adds more character, right? And it's very, very nice looking. And you'll see this more modern seat in it, which would be quite comfortable and stuff like that. Um, take a look at the gauge cluster. That is very nicely done. And uh, yeah, this is a three on the tree. Very nice little Apache, honestly. I do dig it. Yeah. And actually beside this, we have something very, very nice. And actually, this is a car that uh, my buddy Greg would appreciate. This is a Lincoln Town car. And actually, what year is this one? 78. So this would have the 460 in it, which you can see right there. Yep, 460. <sighs> you know, and these, big land whale of a car. Like, these are about 20 feet long. They weigh about 5,200 pounds. And they are the lap of luxury. You will never be more comfortable in a car than driving something like this, right? I've driven the equivalent of this, which is a Lincoln Mark V. It's not a town car. Very similar cars though. Like underneath, it's the same chassis and stuff like that. Just different fenders and appointments and stuff like that. But basically the same underneath. Um, and yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, like I said, these are um, around 20 feet long. So uh, not exactly a small vehicle at all. I love this uh, black on black too, you know, black paint, black metal top, uh, with the blue interior, looks good, honestly. And again, super, super, super comfortable seats. I've sat in seats like that multiple times out of Greg's because he's had a few of these. And uh, yeah, it is awesome. Really do love these cars. Um, now here, every time I see that, I always think it's a kid. Um, here is a Thunderbird. I want to say about a 67. Oh, look at that, 67. Perfect. Uh, 1967 Ford Thunderbird. Under the hood, we have a 390 big block in it, which looks freaking awesome. Yeah, I do not want to touch the paint with my zippers and stuff like that. And always be careful when you're walking around cars, too. Make sure none of your stuff is touching the paint or anything like that. And always make sure that um, any metal and stuff like that, you keep that to an absolute minimum because you do not want to scratch somebody's paint. This is a very nicely appointed vehicle. Very nice paint overall. I do like it. And the white vinyl top looks absolutely killer on it too. Right? Looks good. Um, oh, that's cool. This came from Metro Ford. You can see the badge right there. How cool is that to see, right? You know, and I love when they actually did badges back in the day rather than the stickers that they do now to save money. It's like, you know, back then they were uh, proud. 
a lot more proud to uh about that stuff um and actually i'll show you guys the interior of this one. Ooh, there's a gto judge coming in i'll have to get that on film a little later because yeah i didn't only show you guys inside because inside you'll see nicely appointed leather probably i doubt it's vinyl because it, this is a thunderbird it's a little higher quality cars compared to your traditional cars so yeah very very nice overall um as we move along here i'm gonna go down this way up front here and then head down the other way so here we have now this is really nice i want to say it's about a 56 um chevy pickup and this one oh sorry it's 55 55 chevy pickup and what's cool about this one is it is an extended cab right it looks fantastic. Honestly, I love this truck. And, uh, yeah. Honestly, it's a very, very nice truck. I love the wheels on it. They look absolutely killer. And uh, if we take a look at the box again, wood bed, or wood line bed, which these would have only come, I believe, with a wood line bed until, I think the 60s where you can get an option with a metal one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the interior looks absolutely fantastic. Nice leather seats, nice steering wheel in the gauge cluster. I don't know if you can really see that very well. Uh, you really can't. There you go, you can see it a little bit there. Um, very, very nice and I love that center console and everything. And this is a gorgeous truck. I love this paint. And I love like everything with this truck, honestly. <laughs> we really do dig this and everything he's done with this, uh, again, this almost like a uh, graphite slash battleship gray with the, the burgundy looks fantastic um let's walk to the end and then make our way back forward yeah. over here we have a very gorgeous 67 camaro that um honestly absolutely love the motor that's in it nice three to three stroker that says 405 horsepower so this thing will haul pretty good Got a nice aluminum rad, which is always a worthwhile upgrade to do in your vehicles as well. Yeah. Love these valve covers and everything and the headers and yeah, very, very nice motor. And the paint is absolutely fantastic. I love this uh, this color of blue, this this darker blue. Looks good. And, ooh, he's got some big meats in the back. Check that out. Just big old meats, right? Look good. Very nice looking car. And, uh... Yeah, okay. Ah, frick. My shoe, My shoe is coming apart. <laughs> um, over here, we have a very nice... I actually know this car personally. This is a 1968 uh, Plymouth Roadrunner with these awesome weld wheels and everything. The B5 blue with a black vinyl top. This thing is so highly optioned that I'm surprised they didn't just opt for it to be a GTX. Because now there's been a lot of work done to this one. But this one was power steering, power brake, AC, you know, and mostly options inside too. I just, I was surprised that nobody went, when they were ordering this car, that they um, didn't just go for the uh, GTX package like I mentioned at that point. But it's very nice. And there's been a lot of work done to this motor. So, uh, you know, and there's some air shocks in the back too. So you'll see this thing rolling around sundry with uh, the back end hiked up in the air. It's very nice. And I love that it still has, because you can see it. Oh, well, I mean, not, this, this isn't, I'm uh, sorry. I was thinking of another car. Um, but, and the thing is, and you can tell it's 68 from any other year, two things. A, if the bird on the side is black and white, that is a 68. Also, if you look at the marker lights, if they're round like that, again, that's a 68. Easy way to tell these from the 68 and 69s because they're very similar cars. Inside, you'll see a nicely nice interior and gorgeous, you know, gauge cluster and everything. Nice stereo, you know, very nice car. Very nice car. Um, beside this, 
Uh, we see a, I'm not sure what year this is, I'll have to look at the tag. It is a Pontiac Acadian Canso, actually, which these were the higher end of the Acadians. Now, what's interesting is take a look at how, you know, nice small block Chevy in it, but look at how the headers go out the fenders that way, right? And that's actually how they were. So, um, yeah, um, Vegas did the same thing as well, same as the Monzas. Uh, it's a 65, okay. It's gorgeous, and again, this nice blue. I, I'm I'm a sucker for blue paint. I don't know why. I just, I like blue on cars. Yeah, and you can see, and again, uh, the Acadians were the um, Canadian only, and they were the Chevy version of the Pontiac, or of the Chevy Nova, I should say. Very nice. Absolutely. Yeah? Oh, apologies. Um, just somebody uh, recognized my voice and they wanted to chat with me because uh, they knew about, um, that's actually one of the sisters, if you guys have heard the story of my channel, of the uh, the Nash Metropolitans, which none of them are here. But the sisters that all own Nash Metropolitans, this is actually the husband's uh, GTO. Now this thing has a neat story. Because what I was just told, I was just talking to her about it, um, is her husband um, had his original vehicle, which was a 67 GMC. Then in 69, he wanted a GTO. So he bought a GTO. Um, and the thing is, he eventually had to sell it. And for years and years and years and years and years, he complained about, you know, selling his car. And then his son found the um, found an ad for... A GTO. Now this one didn't look quite the same because it didn't have the vinyl top on it. His had the vinyl top. But the thing is, he still had the original bill of sale when he got this thing home. So um, he checks the original bill of sale that he had with his car. And turns out it's the same car. It's the same VIN. So, you know, years later, they got reunited that way. And that is just so awesome to hear what a story of a car, right? And this one with this blue looks fantastic. With a nice metallic flake in it and everything. Oh, it's great. Nice Ram Air scoops because it's a GTO. So, uh, yeah. I absolutely love these. And these actually have a... Because um, the, the Le Mans had the... Uh, this would have been chrome. Well, these are uh, rubber, right? So, they look good. And they're, they're all body color. Very, very neat. I love that car. And the story with it, too. I love hearing car stories. Um, here we have a 1976... Chevrolet Camaro. Now these are a very, like this is a very nice car in very good condition. Take a look under the hood and you'll see a nice small box Chevy. Now, yeah, and it looks to be like pretty original too. Um, going down the car and hey look at that. Keystone wheels. See, I need those center caps for my wheels. <laughs> um, because mine are missing and mine are Keystone wheels, just not those Keystones. Um, and this one, what year is it? 76. And very nice. I love this hugger orange on white stripes with the white interior. And look at that. Got a nice uh, shifter in it. Manual transmission. Very, very nice car. Very good condition overall. Well, I, overall. No, actually very good condition. 100%. This is like a mint car. And very nice. And I, I dig these Camaros too because they have... Um, these taillights just really speak to me. I don't know why. They do. And oh... Interesting. This was sold at Benny um, Chevrolet Olds in Lethbridge. So uh, I've actually heard of that dealership. They are not called that anymore. But uh, yeah, very neat. It's the original Alberta car as well. Very, very, very cool. Um, going over here, we have a Challenger RT, which, um, you know, it's a uh, Hemi car and everything. Um, and this one is a 2017. There we go. Um, now these are on the Chrysler LX platform, which is derived from the Mercedes E-Class platform. And even the transmissions, for example, in these, if this one's the automatic, which most were, um, was that very similar, as slightly modified, but the five-speed automatic that was in the Mercedes. And this one, yeah, it's an automatic as well. So this would have the same transmission, actually, I think. Because I don't think they had the uh, 
No, they wouldn't have had the, the eight speed yet. I think that came out the year after, right? Very nice, and I like this black on red on it too, right? That just looks good. Very good. Very nice car. I like these. Um, my dad has a Magnum at home, so very similar cars. Underneath, anyways. Um, here we have what looks to be a Model A. I think. Again. So yeah, Model A Tudor 1930. Okay, there we go. Um, so this one, yeah, 1930 Model A. And uh, this is the Tudor body, so... And if you're wondering what that means, that means like the, it's the sedan body, right? Um, very nice, honestly. And I like what's been done with this one, right? Which now, I'm assuming because the uh, center caps say V8, this is... I don't think it's a flathead. It's probably something else due to... Oh, there we go. You can see the size of it there. There is... You can't really see it in there. But that is a small block Chevy. So, <laughs> all good. You know, it's pretty common to do with these. And uh, yeah, nice to see one that isn't chopped. Like I love a chopped vehicle, but nice to see one that still retains its original roof line. Um, here's another vehicle. This is a 57 Ford Fairlane convertible, right? And I absolutely love this. With this kind of a beige on white paint, um, two-tone, if you take a look under the hood, you'll see the Thunderbird Special V8, which, the thing is, they did put the Thunderbird name on other engines as well, and not just the Ford Thunderbird cars. And I love these spotlights, too. That's just awesome. On both sides, too. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, inside, you'll see a nice two-tone interior with a white on black. You know, that looks good. With, uh, you know, the speedometers in these are quite neat to see. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely love it. I'm um, going down the side of the vehicle again. You can just see all the lines. And, like, cars from the 50s, I think, this was the peak, I think, of um, overall styling in vehicles was the 50s. Like, a boat to 59, maybe 1960, actually, of where... They just thought of every inch of the cars back then, it seemed like. And it, there was almost no cars in the 50s that were, like, ugly, either. Like, compared to, say, later on, right? Um, yeah, very, very gorgeous car. Um, over here, we have a very tricked out uh, 1973, because you can actually see um, all the stuff with it. And if you want to pause the video there, you can. I'll just leave it for a couple seconds. Um, Chevy Stepside pickup truck. Now this thing is absolutely crazy. It's got the tilt bed on it. It's got these really fancy, um, Akuza wheels? Actually, that looks, that sounds familiar. Um, hey, do you recognize those? I have those exact same exhaust tips in my shed. Um, inside you'll see this awesome velour interior you know and this thing's even on air ride too which is nice um it's also got a little bit of a chop in the roof by the looks of it like it looks chopped but um yeah and under the hood you'll see you know nicely built motor although it does have uh, these stock manifolds which is interesting you would think that they would have headers but the manifolds do last a lot longer than headers so i'll give it that um and there's nothing wrong with running stock manifolds either right it's just surprising to see, that's all. Uh, you'll see a nice aluminum rad, which again, always a good um, upgrade. And you'll see nice electric fans up front too. With this awesome tilt front end. With this nice burgundy paint and everything. I absolutely love this. You know, and it's got the uh, billet grill in it too. Looks good with the nice roll fan up front too. Very, very nice. Ah, and here we have another Chevrolet pick. I'm sorry, I had to pause the footage there. Um, there was a woman taking a picture of this truck. I didn't want to get in the way. This is a 1948 Chevrolet 1300. And the 1300s were essentially the half-ton pickup trucks, right? Um, back in the day. It's a very nice truck, and I love this copper on black. That looks absolutely killer on this. Absolutely big, big, big fan of this 
with this nice wood bed. And I dig the little Coleman cooler in it. Uh, if we take a look, I say the window is down, so it's kind of convenient. Take a look inside, and you'll see some more modern seats in it that have been cust custom uh, upholstered that way. And, uh, you know, nice. And that looks like a steering wheel off of a Chevy Lumina, because my Lumina Euro has that steering wheel on it, or at least very similar to that. Um, nice gauge cluster and everything, and uh, some aftermarket gauges down there, and there's even a clock over there. Very nice, and that honestly looks like a um, maybe out of like a Tri Five Chevy, like Bel Air or something like that. Dash, I could be wrong, but it kind of looks that way. All right, very nice, and all the chrome and stuff, and. Okay, and there's been some stuff done to this because that as well looks like off of a later car. Like, I want to say a uh, late 50s Apache. But I could be wrong because, yeah, I don't think those were on there. So, but regardless, there's a, a lot of little custom touches on this vehicle that, uh, you know, you'll spot um, if you look really deep at it. Um... Over here we have a nice 49 Mercury 8. Now this is a very nice car. It's a four-door that's uh, very popular for these to be chopped up and turned into hot rods back in the day. And they still are very popular today for that. God, I love this uh, side pipe exhaust. That looks killer on it, to be honest. Um, you know, and take a look down the side of it and everything. This awesome, like, turquoise color. Looks really good, too. Got tinted windows and everything. It is absolutely gorgeous. Big, big, big fan of this 49. Um, you know, and it's got the uh, the fender skirts, which again, you almost never see anymore. Ah, the, the sun came out, it's getting really warm. Uh, love these uh, hubcaps on this and everything. Uh, those look good. And uh, yeah, looks freaking awesome. I love, love these old mercury cars ah here we are i am back and here we have a really neat um this is a 56 chevy bel air nomad i love these uh continental custom wheels on it they look good um under the hood you'll see a nice small block chevy that looks fantastic too and uh yeah this one uh, Dennis is the owner, and he's actually from Sundry, and he drives it. I see this thing all the time out and about, and it's really nice to see it, you know, being driven and not hidden away. Love the interior of it. And the dash. See, okay, yeah, I was, I was correct on that, uh, truck over there. Because if you look at this dash, tell me that the dot does not look exactly like the one in that truck, just the truck is shortened a little bit because it's not as wide. Right? Looks identical. So, yeah. That's what I thought. It's a very, very nice car, though. And like I said, he drives it, which I absolutely love. And you, you like, never see the Nomads, and they have a special style line um, with the roof, honestly. Because, like, a two-door post, well, uh, this post would have been more straight up and down compared to this angle. And that's what makes a Nomad, to be honest. And yeah, and it's only just the one post there because this one is just chrome. And yeah, absolutely gorgeous cars these are. And what's the neat party check with these too is the, um, you might not see a gas filler and there's not one on the other side either because it's in behind the taillight, right? Something uh, 56 and 57 Chevys did have, it was in behind the taillight like that. So, and that's one of the ways to tell as well what year it is for sure. Without just looking at the hood and like, because 55, 56 had the bird on the hood like that, the, you know, the plane. Uh, 57 had almost like bullets on the hood. So, yeah, very, very nice. Um, here we have an absolutely gorgeous 29 Model A hot rod. Take a look and, ooh, hey, finally a small block Ford in one of these. You always see a Chevy. Absolutely love seeing that. <laughs> nice headers and everything. Very gorgeous with the uh, burgundy paint and everything. This looks really good. 
love these American racing wheels on it. And, uh, oh, that is nice too. And if you take a look at this top, that is fantastic. Looks great. Um, if you take a look inside, you'll see very nicely um, appointed interior with some more modern seats. And that's uh, pretty typical, but uh, you know, very comfortable, right? Making it a lot more comfortable. Um, now over here, you'll see this awesome pink Ford Thunderbird. Now, these would have had, I want to say a 312, but I can't remember for sure on the motors of these. And this one's a 55. I know it's a 55 56, because I'll let you know how I knew that later. Oh, they even still got one of the original style um, overflows, right? That looks really good. This has AC in it and everything. Very, very nice. Nice T-Bird. I like the uh, black top. You usually see these with the white tops. So that's interesting. And uh, take a look inside. You know, I love that dash and everything. The engine turn dash looks freaking fantastic. That gauge cluster again. Absolutely love it. The radio, everything appointed in these look amazing. Now this, the reason how I know this is a 55 or 56 is due to it's got a Continental kit. Because that's where your spare tire went on these cars. Um, when they went to 57, they extended the trunks out so you can put the spare tire in the trunk. So that's how you can tell at least a 57 apart from a 56 and 55. Very nice cars. We are back over here with a very nice Chevy Nova. This is a 1970 Nova that, uh, ooh, it's got some big meats in it. And that is a 427 big block under the hood that is built to the nuts. Check out that big tunnel ram on it. Oh, that looks killer. And also the aluminum rad. Again, that, that's an upgrade you need, especially that thick, to run that motor. Because this motor's probably pushing over 600 horse, is my guess. So, um, yeah, like the little Calahood on it and everything. Um, it's got a full on roll cage in it, right? Or at least more of a roll bar, actually, not a roll cage. Well, actually, no, it is a full roll cage. It just doesn't have the the bars in there because of the removal. You know, the five-point harnesses and stuff like that, you can tell this one gets raced. Very nice. Very nice car. You know, and what's nice about this one, too, they look at the tires, right? Those are uh, not full-on slicks, they're road-legal slicks because they have a little grooves in them. That's the only way that those are legal, like that. But very, very nice, nice Nova with the hugger orange and everything. Absolutely killer. I love it. Um, if we move on to what's beside it. Now this, I want to say is a 68. It could be a 69. Um, hoo -hoo -hoo. So the motor in this is actually for sale, which, uh, well, it's a 540 cubic inch big block Chevy. That is a beast with 880 horsepower. Holy crap. So you're a YouTuber? Yeah, I am. Ah, sorry. I just had somebody talk to me about uh, a detail I missed on a uh, Model A over there. Um, this is a 68. So, like I mentioned before, I was pretty sure it was, but wasn't too sure. I like these uh, old wheels on it. Look good with the Mickey Thompson tires. Dig it. Uh, nice skinny tires up front. And it's got a uh, nice roll cage inside. You know, with this purple paint, it looks fantastic, right? Um, got nice racing buckets in it. Which, uh, you know, this is a full on race car. Absolutely bar done, right? When you take a look. You know, oh, and the nitrous controller is right there. So, yeah, and this, this thing is fully set up. Scam. Fully set up. Oh, scam. <laughs> Look at that rig. To, uh... Oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, yeah. and yeah. It's a very nice car. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, as we continue on here, this is actually the car that they're giving away this year, because every year the Cremona Car Show gives away a vehicle. And this year, it's a 1984 Chevrolet Corvette that looks absolutely awesome. I love it. And even with like, you know, 
It's got some of the sun faded paint or whatever else like that, but I don't care. That's just so awesome. Um, you know, I love these NK wheels, which those are actually like original uh, Corvette wheels that you could get on these. And this one, you know, got the full leather interior and everything. It's a nice car overall. Really do dig it. And yeah, I am entered to win this one, so hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, this is one that I'll win, and you'll see it on my YouTube channel soon. But any luck. And also, this is a uh, target top, too. You can see you can remove that and have it a lot like that. Now, it's a little bit of a project, obviously, but, uh, you know, it's great. Like, and if I win it, I just drive it straight home from here. 100%. These have a full digital dashboard and everything like that in them. So, uh, yeah, very neat cars. Um... Ah, so over here we have a very nice GMC Vandura 35, which this would be the 3500. And this is the uh, high top, very high top, right? <laughs> it's a camper van. Um, but these were, you know, and this one screams Canada because it's the Frontier and uh, they're a Canadian company, um, you know, that did some of these conversions back in the day. And if you might remember, if you go back far enough on my YouTube channel, You'll see that I owned an 84 Vandura 2500 temporarily. I didn't have it very long. I think I had it for about two or three weeks. And that was a nice van too. But, uh, you know, I could have kept that if I really wanted to. But I did want to keep it, sort of. But I needed the money. So I sold it off. Take a look at the gauges and everything. A nice upholstery. And then in the back, you can see it's all kitted out that back there, right? Very nice. Uh, this one's... Uh, Full on, go camping, have fun in it, right? That's what you can do with this one. Um, over here, we have a 1966 Valiant Sprint, right? So you see under the hood here, that is a 225 Super 25, 225, which basically you might think, what does the Super mean? It just means a two barrel car, <laughs> if I remember correctly, on these. But yeah, and I love a slant six. They are very, actually, no, sorry. I just, they just put that name on those because it wasn't the two barrel. It was just because it was a 225 versus the 199 and the 170s. Which the 199 wasn't out yet, quite when this came out, I don't think. In 66, I think that came out late 60s. But uh, yeah, very nice. And honestly, these have like really cool styling on them, 100%. And with this red paint, it looks killer. <laughs> Like, big fan of these. Um, love these Krager SS mags on it, which look fantastic. Uh, if we take a look inside, you'll see a very nicely appointed interior. Um, you know, it looks fantastic. It's probably vinyl. Because a Valiant Signet, that's what this one is. And uh, I just wasn't sure what the, uh, the trim model was, which was the Signet, which that was their upper one, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Really do dig it. Ah, so here, now this is a very, very, very special car. You might be thinking, what's so special about a Mustang? This is a 64 and a half K code. <laughs> and what the K code means, 289 V8, right? Um, and this one is a very original car and it's a driver. The guy actually drives it, which is very nice. K code. Oh, oh, I thought it was a K code. Okay, so it's not actually a K code, but uh, he just uh, um, informed me. However, it's still 64 and a half, and it's a four barrel. Very nice car, though. Very, very, very nice car. Um, you know, and these cars, honestly, you don't see the 64 and a half ever, because they only made them for a few months like this. And like, you know, if you take a look at the dash, for example, the uh, the big long uh, speedometer that way. That was 64 and a half only, although they did carry on to early 65s as well until they ran out basically. And then they went to the uh, uh, different speedometer on them. And um, yeah, that's one of the ways to tell a 64 and a half. Um, but then as well, because I mean, and they made so many of these. Like this was uh, like over 60,000 off of the assembly line, something like that that you mentioned to me. But uh, yeah, very nice. Gorgeous cars, and with that uh, that poppy red, even though it looks orange, it's called poppy red is the color. It's a very very gorgeous car. Um, now here we have 
a 48 Ford uh, Super Deluxe. Looks very, very killer. I love this car. This paint looks fantastic. This two-door business coupe body on it. It looks really good. And with the chrome and everything, you know, these were just a very kind of understated car at the time, but they were uh, very so elegant to a degree. But these were a basic car back then. That's why they were called business coupes. But yeah, and take a look at the, uh, the gauge cluster and everything. That looks good. Looks very good. Um, and just and look how wide like the front ends are on these, right? It's just absolutely incredible. And it's the 47. But actually, that's just 48, but it's actually 47. So, regardless, you know, pretty cool. Now, over here we have a uh, a 1980 GMC Sierra 1500. Now, this actually, you'll see this actually. Um, if you ever come to the sundry um, car meets that we have every Friday at 7 o'clock, he's one of the regulars. So, you know, it's a beater, but it's a sweet truck. I absolutely love what he's done with it so far. Um, if you take a look, like for example, at the front end, it had these side steps on it. And instead, um, he put on the side step for, you know, a little bumper, right? Like a little chin spoiler. Looks good. Yeah. Nice V8 motor in it. Um, it's a 350. You know, it's good. And even the interior. Again, I like the interior too. Like the seating in and everything. Looks good. Very good. Very fancy.